Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I wanna to share with you how to create a sweet looking existing conditions model, kind of like this building here behind me, using just free images found online. So when I say free images found online, I mean that sometimes we need uh, to build a building, uh, especially if we want to show a context building or something that exists in the real world. And uh, we don't really have CAD floor plans. We don't have as built drawings. We just have an image of it. So the question is, is how can we model from just an image? And not only that, but how can we use more than one image? Where do we get them? How do we import them into SketchUp? Let's go ahead and cover that process now. Now, I will say right now, this is just an overview of the process because I'm going to plug a campus course that we've done that shows the entire process. So right now, I just want to kind of show you what are the three image sources that I can use to build a model like this? This is an existing building in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it used to be a Trimble office. So I thought, hey, this would be really cool to see if we could build this and maybe do a redesign, adaptive reuse, who knows? So the first thing I want to just kind of point out, and this sounds obvious, but you know, I like to start with the footprint. So in order to do that, I need to go to plan view. So when we go to plan view, then when I say reference image, I think it should be obvious, but maybe not, that I'm referring to this aerial image. So there's different sources that you can get, especially depending on which version of SketchUp you're using. But for me, if I hide this and pretend like we're starting from the beginning, this aerial image is really important because it kind of tells me some things. It tells me where the sidewalk is, it tells me maybe where the cars or where this ramp is, you know, where maybe the existing trees are. There's a lot of information that can be gathered just from the aerial. So we have other videos on geolocation, so I won't spend a lot of time, but I will point out one cool feature. I'm gonna go ahead and say add more imagery because I've already kind of geolocated this model. But you can switch between a satellite photo or a street map. So the difference between the two is that the satellite gives you more information, I think, as far as like the context around the building. So the sidewalk, maybe some cars, an air conditioning unit, some of those details that I think are gonna be important to bring this existing space to life in 3D. But the street map gives you some information that you don't get maybe necessarily, or it gives it to you in a different way. Like for example, you get the building footprint, you get maybe a parcel line, you get kind of, you can estimate better where the street center lines are. So what I'm gonna do is grab, uh, since I already have the aerial, I'm gonna grab just this regular map. So you can do both. You can go back and forth and grab both the satellite and the street map. So I'm going to hide this for a second. Um, what I want to do is pretend like I'm starting from scratch. You can see here that if I was going to start from scratch, this makes it a little bit easier to see compared to the aerial where my building footprint lines or edges are going to be. Now the aerial itself is taken, it's a, taken from, remember, the roof down. So depending on how tall the building what you see is the roof may not be what's actually touching the ground. So I do like to get my building footprints from this sort of non-aerial, more diagrammatic map view. And then once I've done that, let me go ahead and get rid of this. Don't need it. That was just for reference. Once I've done that, then I can go in and extrude my building and then start to populate out the pieces around it. So that first piece of information here is going to be both the aerial and the street map that you can get from geolocation. And if you don't use geolocation or you don't have access to it, you can always bring in an aerial from a different place, or you can bring in something from near map or placemaker. There's other sources that you can get aerial information from beyond the geolocation feature. So definitely start that process there. So now once we've got sort of that footprint here and we just maybe bring it up and we're ready to kind of start the 3D part, the 2D to 3D part. So what information can we work with here? So this is where going down to street level in something like Google Maps or Bing Maps or Apple Maps and grabbing a street level view that you can then bring in to model from. In this case, I'm gonna start with Match Photo. So Match Photo is a feature here. So when you import into SketchUp, you can go import. It's gonna give you the option to use it as an image, use it as a texture, or this third option, which is use as matched photo. So if you select use as match photo, what you get is sort of an interesting way that it brings the image in, not as a watermark, not as a texture, but as sort of an overlay. So you can see when I zoom out here, what it's doing is it's fixing, it's locking that image into perspective. And then I can go in and align my model's perspective. Like if I come over here and open up my matched photo panel, you can see here is that 
it gives you some settings that I can then go in and turn the grid on and off. I can adjust these grid lines so I can basically match the model to the photo. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to do that because we've got tons of great videos actually already existing that go into way more detail about how to get the perfect match photo. In this case, the point is, is that you can bring an image in, you can use it as a match photo. And for example, I'll give you an example of why this is really helpful. If I was to go in and place uh, my utility poles, you can see it's, ma it's matching the perspective. Um, it's locking the perspective of the photo so that when I go to place it, I can just kind of place that right where I want it. And I know that's gonna be uh, pretty close to what it is in real life. So that's really helpful for me. So I'm going back and forth between my modeling view. You know, if I rotate, I lose that match photo perspective. I'm out of it. And I can go back to that match photo. I can bring that back in anytime. So that was two. That was two ways. The plan view, the street view as matched photo. The third way that I like to do is now match photo is great, but not every angle works for match photo, especially if you're doing an elevation where the perspective, you don't get that two point perspective as well. So I like to think about it as a watermark as well. And for those that uh, have seen my videos before, you know that I love working with the watermark feature. With the watermark, you can see when I zoom out here, let me just go ahead and toggle that section cut off. When I zoom out, unlike that matched photo, it didn't zoom out with my model. It stayed fixed. And that's because this image is not being referenced in the model. It's not being referenced in the match photo setting. It's actually being referenced as a style. So under the style, under whichever style I have that watermark for, you can see if I go into edit under watermarks, I can turn the watermark off and on. I can change the watermark from above the model. I can switch it back to below the model. So I can switch it, you know, the order of where I want it to show up. And I can also go in and select the watermark and edit its transparency or, or opacity settings. So let me see, probably better if I do that above the model where it was in the beginning and then come over here and I'll just change that. So if I wanna see more of the image, I can see that, but of course the line work gets hard to see. So in this case, I'm gonna push that image back where I can still see it as a reference, but um, it's not super bright or super bold. Because the point is that it's not for me to keep this image, it's really just to model from. So I'll click okay, and let me go back to that scene. Now I, from this point on, it's basically just moving the model and maybe zooming in and out and using the pan and zoom tool to sort of align this. It's a little bit different method than if you've used the match photo before. And again, it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. It's just a reference that I want to use to work. So I know if I kind of look closely here, I know that there's a tree well here. I know there's a tree right here. I can see that in the photo and it gives me kind of a pretty close approximation on how to start. So that's pretty cool. So if I switch to my working view, I can pop out at any point, so I can switch kind of back and forth between the watermark view, um, and then I can switch to the working view, and that pops the watermark out, and I can kind of see how this building's coming together. Or if I'm in the match photo view, and I start, I start using that as my reference to kind of align things, and I switch back to that working view, and as soon as I um, orbit, I lose that match photo, and I get to actually start working on my model. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. I'm gonna wrap up to say that I built this entire building. I mean, it's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. And this was built using just those three images or used actually three images in three different ways. So what I want to do is, like I said in the beginning, is that I'm going to go pretty quick because the point of this was actually to plug a course on SketchUp Campus. So our latest course that we've launched here as of the date of this recording is Architecture Building from Reference. So this process that I use to bring in these three images and trace and draw from and reference, it's all here for you step by step through a much slower pace where you actually can download the files and you can follow along with us and you can go ahead and practice each one of these techniques, whether it's the match photo method, the watermark method, or the geolocation method. And then of course we go beyond that where we go to 3D Warehouse and we look at some other details that don't show up in the images and just kind of how to basically approach a process like this where you're modeling from just images. So that was it. That was basically three images brought into SketchUp three different ways and basically just using what I see in the images to model 
a building um, that then I can use in my renderings or I could use in a concept design or I could send off to um, you know, another team and then you can start doing some test fit exercises. So whatever you, you, the use is for something like this, this technique, obviously that's up to you, but hopefully you found uh, something in here useful. Uh, take that campus course, let us know. There's a, a place to give feedback there as well. So if you've taken it already, let us know how it went. If not, go check it out at learn.sketchup.com. And I will leave you there with thank you and see you next time.